So here's the solution to this integral, which is from the Berkeley Map Tournament during the Integration B activity. And I was a guest slash a co-host for the Integration B on that day. So thanks to all the BMT people for having me over there. I didn't create the integrals though, our Russian theorist did. So thank you too so much for your hard work and also for all the BMT people who helped out on that day. If I remember correctly, none of the competitors on stage got this question right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it should be a square, but not a All right, it, it should be a square. Yeah. Round two. Yes, we will have a round two right now. <laughs> All right. So let's see how to do it. It looks that we should just do maybe a u sub first, let u equal to this, and then maybe use integration by parts after that. I think eventually it will work, but remember, you have to compete with the other person on stage in terms of speed. So let's see if we have a faster way. And in fact, there it is. Notice that we have a rational function times e to the x. So this right here is what we hope to see. If we have the integral, if we can somehow break this down into a function plus its derivative, then it's going to work out so nicely. Because if we have the integral of a function plus its derivative, and then times e to the x, then this right here is just going to give us the function times e to the x. Why? Well, if we differentiate the result, plus e will just get zero, doesn't matter. Differentiate this, we keep the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which is f prime of x. And then from here, we can factor out the e to the x right here. I know I forgot the parentheses. And you see this right there. So let's see how we can break this down. You don't need to do partial fraction in the usual sense. Just check this out. So here we go, integral. The bottom here is x plus 1 cube. The top is x minus 1. We don't like that. Wouldn't it be so much better if we have x plus 1? Yes, because that way we can cancel with one of them, right? So let me at least put down x plus 1 right here. But of course, I changed the whole thing, huh? But don't worry. To get back to negative 1, all we have to do is just minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So it didn't change uh, the value. Now, I'm going to split the fraction. I'm going to do this over that. So x plus 1 over x plus 1 cube. And then minus 2 over that. And then we have the e to the x dx. Aha! This and one of them cancel. So we are looking at integral 1 over x plus 1 squared minus 2 over x plus 1 cubed times e to the x. Now, we are going to hope that if this thing is the derivative of that, or maybe the other way around. In fact, this right here is precisely a function, and this right here is its derivative. Why? Let me show you. So, note that I'm going to write this as x plus 1 raised to a negative 2 power. Use the power rule. Oops, don't mean like this. I'm not doing algebra. So, so, yeah, I'm doing the yeah, power rule. And then that will give us the derivative. So we have negative 2 times x plus 1. And that will give us negative 3. And of course, we should use the chain rule. But the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. Doesn't matter if you forget about that. So in fact, the derivative is precisely negative 2 over x plus 1 cubed, which is exactly that, that part. 
So, by what we talked about it earlier, this right here is just going to be the original function right here times e to the x. So I'm just going to put down e to the x on the top over parentheses x plus 1 squared. And then that's it. Of course, put down plus c. And that will do it. Thank you.